Hello and welcome to Our Kids, brought to you by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Fern Creek High School correspondent Keelan Frazier. We have some great stories for you this December. Students getting hands-on science lessons, applying deeper learning, and preparing for their future. Plus, we have these student stories. College is racing toward high school seniors, but these students are getting a head start. Ballard High School comes through again for another successful Red Cross blood drive. No middle school student, AJ Rivera, stars in a new Nickelodeon movie. He gave us all the scoop about filming on set in Canada. Oh, this is where I filmed one of my first vlogs. I'm AJ Rivera. I go to no middle school, and I play Andrew Pickleman in Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. Andrew Pickleman. I got to take part in a thing called Nick Sketch Live, and only 12 kids in the United States get picked for all the big Nickelodeon people. And um, they sort of gave me an audition for Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library, and I got the part. It was amazing, because that was my first movie I'd ever gotten, my first ever big job, and the fact that it was a Nickelodeon film was crazy. I was freaking out, it was amazing. And the whole Canada shoot, I've never been out of the country, so going to Canada was awesome. It was freezing, because the scene that we first shot, um, the, like the opening scene, welcome to the library, that outside scene was freezing and we had little tents and they had heaters in them and immediately after they'd say cut we would get huge coats thrown on us and then we'd run to the tents and it was really funny. Ty who played Chiltington the bully, we always went back and forth being mad at each other in scenes and then immediately after they say cut we would cry laughing. Noah has a really good fine art system and of course that immediately drew me towards them, and um, I ended up going with their drama classes, and that really helps. Don't you dare hurt them! And one of my favorite scenes was where I pushed Ty out of the way, and then it's where they shoot the bow at us, and then the troll comes up, don't you hurt them, and then pulls out an ax, that's my job, like, oh, runs the other way. The special effects were amazing, I could not have imagined that, and, and I, I don't know what else to say, it was amazing. The Adventures in Water Festival gave students a chance to get hands-on lessons about the Ohio River and how the water gets to our taps and beyond. When the pipes are in front of your yard, how we get it into your home. We knew it was going to do that. Every year the kids really tend to like that little explosion of water that comes out. We are at Louisville Water Tower Park here at the Water Tower and we have lots of students out here with us today. Uh, we have four Jefferson County Public Schools this afternoon, but over the course of our three-day water festival, which is where we are, uh, we'll probably see about 1,600 students. I think it's pretty cool. It's just like the small ones, then all of a sudden, so oh my gosh, you just stared right at me. Those look like ocean fish to me. That, one looks, shiny. that one looks like a snake. So the one that's laying snake. down? Yeah. And how like they live in the Ohio River and how they can't really catch big fish because it, in that tank, it will be like really small for them to move. Right now, we're um, looking at a bunch of cool fish that they got in the Ohio River over there. We never know what we're gonna collect because every single time that we work an event, we collect the fish right before the event. What's another example? Rain. Rain, very nice. How about another way that precipitation comes out? Hail. They are coming out to learn about water and how it's used in lots of different ways. So this whole festival really focuses on all the great ways that you use water every day. You need water to survive, to drink. Because then we can learn more about um, water and how to not to litter. And, and it's super, super tall. Remember, 169 feet tall. The Louisville Water Company's dedication to trying to extend that learning experience um, give them that real world sort of something they can get their hands on to see all the great ways that, that their school connects to the community. That's called a fall class. Really learning about how science comes to life. They're in the classroom learning science and social studies and practical living, but sometimes they don't see that connection to their community. And I think this is a great way for them to just, again, bring that to life. All the way from the river to your tap at the home. So uh, it's definitely an opportunity for them to see, uh, even for a future career path, for them to know what we do. At Tully Elementary, 
They surprised two special teachers at the ribbon cutting for the school's new renovations. I'm proud to be here to uh, have a ribbon cutting on the new renovations to uh, Tully Elementary and the great space that has now been added. Deeper learning is such a huge component of what we do and the new space that you will see directly behind us is a real commitment to deeper learning. Um, as our district committed $11.2 million to this project and the renovation here. A new secured entrance, brand new front office area, but most importantly is the new learning area for our students, which behind us is a library, a broadcast studio with a green screen inside that library. Took the old unused pool that was behind us and converted it into an art room, a music room, multi-purpose space. Yes, today we get to open up the newest section and uh, soon it will be a very cognitively busy place with students learning and working cooperatively together. And I now like to invite Principal Don Howard and two special teachers who are going to join us uh, for our ribbon cutting. Miss Catherine Wigger is our JCPS Music Teacher of the Year and Miss Margot Thornberry is our Kentucky Art Teacher of the Year. We are here today to honor two very special people, two people that I know that you love to see each and every day when you walk in the building, and this is Thornberry and Miss Wigger. She gives us options on how we want to do things, and she takes the time to create interesting and exciting lessons. I can tell Miss Wigger loves her job because she's always making learning fun. She's such a kind, loving, and loyal person, which is why I love doing ensemble with her. Congratulations. I see a lot of kids who math and reading isn't their thing, but they come into music and they thrive. And it's their one area where they love it and they um, just excel. My favorite part about art club is I get to stay after school with one of my favorite teachers. Mrs. Thornberry teaches us a lot about art. I love art and Mrs. Thornberry. She goes above and beyond to be the best art teacher she can. Thank you, Ms. Thornberry, for teaching us these past six years, kindergarten through fifth. If the art teacher's not having fun, then nobody's having fun. I, I really enjoy having fun with the kids. You all are winners, as you all do your best. Thank you so much, Carmen. Correspondent Amaya Bradford takes us to the new dual credit English class offered by Fern Creek High School, where students are enrolled at the University of Louisville. Here at Fern Creek High School, many seniors are taking the first ever dual credit English class. Dual credit means that a high school is partnered with a college or university and students in this program will get credit for an English class at the college. Dual credit has never been offered at Fern Creek until Dr. Wright came in last year. She was an English major at UofL and now teaches the AP Literature and Dual Credit class. Dr. Wright is working very hard to get the students ready for college. I had worked with uh, Fern Creek High School for my dissertation which looked at how students were prepared for college writing and in my conversations I learned that Fern Creek did not have a dual credit English program. From those talks uh, Dr. Meyer and Dr. Nicholas followed up with me and uh, with the help of Mr. Baker I was offered a job here to help bring dual credit to Fern Creek. The class is important overall for a couple of reasons. First, students are getting the college level coursework while, while they still have all of the supports of the high school. Um, so they have greater access to their teacher, they're more familiar with the, their surroundings and the resources of the community. Second of all, they are starting their college transcripts and getting free college credit through the dual credit scholarship program in the state of Kentucky. Dr. Wright coordinated the class, field trip, and schedule with the Dual Credit Admissions Director, Steve Smith. On October 18th, Dr. Wright and her Dual Credit English class took a field trip to the University of Louisville. The students got to tour the campus and learn more about the school they were partnered with. They even got their own UofL IDs and became a member of the university. The students took a class on research and how to do so properly, and they were very excited they got to do so. We have to give these students some credit. They really are ahead of the game. For our kids, I'm Front Creek correspondent Amaya Bradford. We have more great stories by JCBS students. Stay tuned. Have a great day. Share an experience. Start the day with a smile. Be a source of inspiration. The students of JCPS need you. Volunteer with Jefferson County Public Schools. Your time is your greatest gift, and every moment is special. 
Join our team by contacting the Volunteer Talent Center at 485-3710. Together, these little moments can make a big impact. Welcome back to Our Kids. I'm Fern Creek High School correspondent Keelan Frazier. GE sponsored a competition for creative marketing campaigns for a soda company. Students apply deeper learning techniques on their projects. So Atomic Lime is the newest lemon lime energy drink to hit the market. Noah, what time is it? Oh, it's prime time. We're at the GE Appliance Center uh, and we're presenting our uh, soda project. This is the culmination of a project that we've been working on um, since last summer. They call it the Acme Soda Project. We had to design a brand and we had to essentially design and build our brand, talk about the finance prospects, the corporate citizenship prospects, production. We had to talk about all these different aspects and how they affected our brand that we created. It takes like a bunch of kids who do a project together and in a group and work together to make a product and it helps them learn in different ways other than just regular class-based learning where you just sit and take notes and all that. So instead you're just getting the project done and you're working to make a better product than just writing down things and you get more knowledge from it. If we really want our school district to implement project-based learning so that students are in class learning how what they're learning in school can apply to the real world, then we need to get teachers out into the workforce so the things that they're teaching in their classroom could relate better to the real world. Deeper learning? Uh, I think it's learning that affects you on a personal level and it's learning that you can really use in the future. It's something that'll help you here and now and it'll also help you later on down the road. It's a lot more fun, you get a lot more experience out of it, you get a lot more knowledge from it. Instead of just the regular like, note taking and all that, you're actually talking to people and like getting more, doing different stuff than usual. The whole class decided on, there's a lot of different avenues out there um, that I think this project has opened up um, for our students. Well, I think the biggest thing was that it opened up their eyes um, in working together, one, um, and also opened up their eyes and seeing that there's more to after high school than just going to college. Overall, it was a fun experience. It was very youthful. It got us to have a very wide aspect on, on you know, life and about life decisions that people have to make every day and how everyday companies just to market the products that we have every day, all the backstory behind what they do and you know how it gets to in the stores when we buy it. At Manual High School, dumpsters are being transformed with art and compassion. I'm basically just drawing like a bunch of patterns right now. We're at DuPont Manual High School and what's happening here is a part of the nonprofit organization, Good Clothes, Good People. I got an email from a former student and um, he and Sabib asked me if I would be willing to help do the art part of this project and I was like sure because I felt like that my students would really enjoy uh, giving back to the community. Doing a project that takes them away from just creating art portfolios and their own artwork, but actually giving back to the community and really working on project-based and hands-on learning. So Josh McPhee is the artist that we're focusing on, and he does like, this is like prints that he did, and it's like climate change and stuff, and he's an activist for that. The ultimate purpose is to combine artistry and community service where we um, get donated bins, we paint them, we put them in different spaces around Louisville, we get the clothing donations, and they stay right here in Louisville. The cans are gonna be artistically decorated so that they will be engaging, so people walk by and say, oh wow, what's that? And then hopefully they will say, oh, I wanna, you know, I wanna donate to this project because these, these bins are so alluring, they're calling to me. So we have three at Manual and one at Mazique, and both of those bins are um, for the CAT program, the clothing assistance program, but the other bins that we have, those are both going to go to the wayside for the homeless population in Louisville. I think it's great for the magnet that uh, we get to do something like this and help the community, and uh, I think it's a really cool thing that we're doing. Manual kids are fantastic, they're really focused, they're really enthusiastic, but so often they, they're focused on their own work and their own career and this is a way for them to see 
how um, the logistics behind creating a big art project that's for the community. For instance, we had to have paint donated. We've had to come up with ideas that would work on the side of a dumpster because some, sometimes the ideas are too complicated, sometimes they're too simple. This is about climate change, the cool. Yes. That's nice. Uh, we're all learning together. I think it's nice to know that it's going to go to something and like it's just going to benefit other people because it's benefiting me just by making art. Doing it was really gratifying and like working with people was really interesting. People like the principals of DuPont Manual and the Zeke have been really helpful and open. People at St. Michael's, Rumkey, I've just been really surprised at the generosity of these different uh, companies. You got the Basquiat vibe going on. There are three manual themed ones. There's like an abstract one, artists who are activists to sort of like tap into that community aspect. There are other bins that are more catered to the location. Right now we're doing a Keith Haring like based like can. I think it's important because like not only do the art kids have a chance to like help people through their art and like get clothing donations through their art. I also think it's interesting that like we have we have provided so many different locations across Louisville where people can donate. If people are interested, they can always go to our website, goodclothesgoodpeople.org and contact us. We are trying to give back to the community by doing this. It's really gratifying because like right now we've been so focused on getting the bins, getting them painted, getting spaces. So I'm really excited for when we actually get to donate a bunch of these to Wayside in the clothing assistance program. Ballard High School shows their compassion by holding an annual blood drive. Correspondent Catherine Brucken has the story. Ballard students and staff rolled up their sleeves ready to donate for another successful American Red Cross blood drive. 101 students signed up ready to donate with 68 of them being first time donors. It makes people feel good to donate and I feel like when they donate they feel like they can do anything and also it's just really good it's a great experience to do and you just enjoy it and you want to keep doing it over and over again. Students who volunteered understand the significance of the blood drive for the nation and around the world. Well I decided to donate blood this year because we had all those hurricanes and they had the giant lines outside for blood and I figured I might as well help out somehow. I donated blood today because I got to save three lives. When Ballard donates we get a huge turnout which is so important for the community. Right now we're in a very much of a demand for blood after what's happened in Las Vegas and before that we had tragedies and flooding in Florida and Texas. Plans are already underway for the spring of 2018 Red Cross Blood Drive. I'm Katherine Brucken reporting for our kids. As we head the break, let's hear how a student from Mazik Middle School is using robotic technology. Okay, so um, I have a program called Range where it uses the ultrasonic sensor right here to sense how far away something is. Like so if it's within a certain range, like from five centimeters to 20 centimeters away, then it'll follow your hand and go forward. So right now, it's like my hand is within the range, so it'll follow the, my hand. But if it's like too close, then it'll stop so that it doesn't like bump into your hand. Or if it's too far away, it's not within the range. So you can like make it follow your hand. JCPS serves over 100,000 students. And with that, a lot of waste is generated. We need to do our part to recycle because it can serve natural resources, help the environment, and save money. When we recycle, we put less coal and gases into the power plant, which reduces the amount of toxins in the atmosphere. We are JCPS, and we recycle. Yeah! I'm neurosurgeon Shad Bidiwala, Seneca High School class of 1989. I am JCPS. I'm Ballard High School junior Brianna Owens, and I've been selected for the Wharton School of Business Summer Institute. I am JCPS. I'm Marshall Goldsmith, Valley High School class of 1967. Executive leadership coach, I am JCPS. I'm Justin Cornwell, Eastern High School class of 2007, and I played a young Muhammad Ali. I am JCPS. We are JCPS. Welcome back to Our Kids. I'm Fern Creek High School correspondent Keelan Frazier. At Iroquois High School, students participate in a signing event where they are starting their careers in skilled trades while still in high school. We would like for the students to sign. Really amazing event today. Um, we have three companies here who are demonstrating a partnership with education and with the schools here in Jefferson County. Like most of the industry, we're looking for good people. 
Um, there's a shortage of machine trade workers and um, we have a severely aging and retiring workforce. These are 16, 17 year old students that they're going to take on as apprentices at their organization. And so what they're seeing and recognizing is that there's great talent right here in these high schools in Jefferson County um, and they would do well to identify, attract and hire them now. There is a lot of opportunity to work. When I grow up I will be uh, electrician since I was a kid. I always like to see how fix wires, the radios. So I'm very interested in like electrons and electricity. This experience is kind of like uh, to get me ready and uh, to practice what I learned from school to put now in action. They're going through amazing programs right here in these schools where they're getting that, some hands-on skills with uh, from machinery we saw here to electricity to early childhood education. We see it as an opportunity and also a responsibility to uh, jump on board with uh, the youth um, through track program or even schools that don't have track programs. We're seeing that change in Kentucky now. Um, more and more students are being able to be pushed toward the trades and I think the students are also seeing the advantage of that. On the bottom of every resume is a high school diploma or GED. Well, why wait 10 years to hire those people? Why not identify them now? And I still got an opportunity to have education. So this is kind of like they give me opportunity to work and make some few money. This is life changing for a lot of these students today um, to have the opportunity for an apprenticeship. That means that they're going to be working towards a journeyman certification. And when they earn that journeyman, they're looking at being able to write their ticket. Where do you want to go? Programs for students. Junior Achievement Inspire is a middle school career fair where students have a chance to explore various jobs in the Louisville region. So what we're doing here is we're just taking a couple of simple ingredients. We're actually doing the work ourselves. We are at the JA Inspire event and I'm basically just asking questions to people who are in a certain career field so that I in my future can know what career that I might want to choose. We are in the middle of JA Inspire and it's a mega career fair for 8th grade students so that they can learn more about different jobs that are available in our region and then they can plan their high school coursework to take them to their dreams. There are more than 90 businesses here and these individuals want to share with the kids what the jobs are in their own companies. Learning about new jobs is helps you focus like where, where you're going to be when you grow up. Most kids like uh, they, go to, they go to school, they don't get to like experience jobs and see what jobs are like and it shows you what jobs are like it has going to be. I think it's cool because there's different like careers where they can choose from and like you can learn about different things. I like it. It's a, it's a good idea. And it's, and it's actually very fun to be here and ask them questions and learn about the careers that they work in and the fields that they're in. Three, four, five, six. Okay. It's amazing the number of jobs that I don't even know about in this community. But take, for example, a business like GE. They have HR. They have manufacturing. They have skilled trades. They have communications, they have marketing. I mean, there are so many different jobs that most, many young people don't even hear about until they graduate from college and they didn't take the courses they needed to get the jobs. I've learned a lot and I've learned that there's a lot of jobs that are acquired, especially in this field, engineering of some sort. And I learned a lot about chemical processes and how certain people make products for other companies. We need a way to inspire kids in eighth grade toward two careers so that they can choose career academies. They can choose the right track for themselves at JCPS so that they can graduate either with a certificate or ready to go to college and study what they're dreaming of. When they leave here, we want them to have a better idea of the jobs that are available right here in this region we want them to have a better idea of what kind of high school coursework they can take to get one of those jobs. And most importantly, we want them to be inspired and motivated and driven to attain that job. Texas Roadhouse gave a special Thanksgiving holiday treat to the students and families at Bick Elementary. We are at Bick Elementary. Happy Thanksgiving! We are having a Thanksgiving event sponsored by Texas Roadhouse. We're for Thanksgiving dinner. I was so excited. 
that was like we are having a Thanksgiving dinner Saturday and we would love for everyone to come. So last year, um, the school won the uh, Best Attendance Award, which Texas Roadhouse um, helped sponsor, and the winner of the award received a free Texas Roadhouse celebration lunch. And while our entire team here was celebrating and, and feeding the children, we were just so taken with the school, the principal, the teachers, the staff, and said, you know what, we want to do something extra special next year um, because the kids were so polite and so fun. We have been awarded because we're very respectful and we listen to everyone and everyone in the school. And so Steve Baco, who's on our food team, said, you know what, why don't we cook Thanksgiving meal for not only the students, but their families. We have having lunch with our family for Thanksgiving at 8, bread, cupcake, and uh, Chicken? Everyone was excited. Students, families, everyone was excited and even had to ask a couple times, are you sure it's free? We don't have to pay anything. So everyone was amazed about the partnership and what Texas Roadhouse was providing for us. There we go. We're excited about uh, Texas Roadhouse's generosity and so um, with the generosity we want to teach our kids to give back. So this was an event that Texas Roadhouse did for us. So now starting um, next week we're going to start a kickoff food drive for uh, families for Christmas um, dinners and we're going to start a food bank for that so that the students and our families can have an opportunity to give back since Texas Roadhouse was so generous to us. Let's take a peek inside Western Middle School for the Arts as students fine tune their skills. Thanks for watching our show. This is the crew from Frankie High School that helped put it together. We hope you enjoyed it. You can find full episodes of our kids on JCPS YouTube channel. Until next time, keep supporting our kids. Woo!